Hi guys, uh, James back with another video. And this is one that I thought of recently and came together fairly quickly. And it was another one where it mainly centered around one movie, which ended up being number one movie. And I kind of built the list around it because I wanted this movie to be on the list. And I, I used one of the categories of, of this film, and that is that it's an adventure. So this is the top 10 adventure films. <clears throat> so, and I have to give credit to certain podcasts because there was a few movies that I never would have seen or heard of had it not been for them. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so we'll start with number 10. Number 10 is a Russian film from 2019 called Abigail. And this one I had seen a preview for and it was a fantastic preview. It's a good movie, but it was a fantastic preview. And they had set the preview to music to a cover of the song Zombie, originally done by the Cranberries. It's a very slow, very slow, um, almost haunting version of the song. It plays over the, plays over the trailer. So this is essentially um, you get Abigail, who's a young girl living in a town, and years ago, um, the town, <clears throat> her father, her father was classified as sick. There was some epidemic in the running rampant through the city, and a bunch of people were taken, and the city was walled off. And years later, it turns out that it was a lie told by the higher-ups. There was no epidemic. Um, the thing is... <clears throat> that there are certain people in the city who have magical abilities, magical powers. And it turns out Abigail's father was one of them. And I believe he's the only per he's the only non-Russian actor, I think, in this movie. And it's played by Eddie Marzen, uh, a British actor. And all the rest are, I believe, Russian actors, because I didn't recognize any of them or their names. And so essentially Abigail's on a search for what happened to her father and it turned, as it turns out, she discovers that magic exists and it exists in the town she's living in. And her father may have, may have uh, possessed magical abilities as well. And so you've got all these shadowy figures wearing masks, wielding magic, trying to keep everyone in line. And it's very, it's a very beautiful looking film. I didn't, I don't think, well, I've only watched it the one time. I don't think it quite lived up to the trailer from the f one viewing I had. But there's something about it that sticks with me. And I thought it was a, a great, a great film. A great Russian film. So that was Abigail. Number nine, we have a film from 2014. A uh, film that was another one, another Simon Pegg film that was strongly recommended to me by my buddy Greg. And this is Hector and the Search for Happiness. And you got Hector, played by Simon Pegg, who is a psychiatrist, and he's not happy uh, at all. Not happy in his life, not happy in his marriage. He's married to uh, his wife, is played by Rosamund Pike. And so. To save, to save, I suppose, his life, and more importantly, his marriage, he goes on a search for happiness. So he goes, goes on sort of a, an adventure around the world, visit all these places. So you got Simon Pegg, Rosamund Pike, uh, Tony Collette's in there, Stellan Skarsgård, Christopher Plummer, uh, the late Christopher Plummer, fantastic Canadian actor. Uh, you've got Jean Reno. Um, I think those are the only actors I really recognized in this, and and it's and it's and it's it's really that simple. It's he goes, it's it's sort of an excuse to to show different parts of the world and different cultures, and to see if he can get his happiness back. So. 
That was Hector and the Search for Happiness. Very, very charming film. Number eight, we have a film from 2010, a film by Luc Besson, and this is The Extraordinary Adventures of Adil Blanc Sec. And I had heard about, I think I had read about this because I was looking up um, to see if Luc Besson had done anything around this time. And prior to actually seeing the film, I had, I had, seen, I had picked it up in a used store the Blu-ray, owned it for a while, never watched it, got rid of it, and then I, I think, I think, uh, uh, Dave and, uh, James and Zach from Cinerealist had talked about it, and so I went and picked it up again, because it was still there, and ended up, ended up really enjoying it, because you, you basically got this author who goes on an adventure to, uh, Peru, um, Egypt, like investigating mummies, there's doctors that can bring people back to life. It, it does center most around this this one mummy, but there's also like uh, uh, dinosaur skeletons get brought back to life and are flying around town. And uh, It's really, really an interesting, it was much better, I wasn't expecting it to be as, as I don't want to say enchanting, but as entertaining as I thought it was going to be. You've got, you got Louise Bourgeois playing Adil Blanc-Sec. I had never seen her before. Uh, Matthew Almerick, Amalric. He was, the, he was the, the Bond villain from Quantum of Solace. Uh, um, let me see. I, I, didn't really, I didn't really recognize a lot of the actors in this. It was all, all French actors, because Luc Besson is French. Uh, movies in French and it's subtitled but if you can get past that just like you can with any other foreign film it's worth it based on based on a comic book series Extraordinary Adventures of Adil Blanc Sec by Jacques Tardy and yeah the, the visual effects are impressive and the story the story is very entertaining so that's Extraordinary Adventures of Adil Blanc Sec Number seven, we have a film from 1986, and some of the ones on this list are on here not because they may not be as well known, or at least in their time they weren't, but because they're like 20, 30 years old, like back in the 80s or so. So they're familiar to me, but if you're not as old as I am, then you, you may not have, you just haven't heard of a lot of the classic movies from the 80s. Or if you're not a cinephile like me, I don't know. So this is from 1986, and this is called Firewalker. And this stars primarily Chuck Norris and Louis Gossett Jr. as two, two sort of adventurers who are looking for, looking for a, uh, they're treasure hunters, looking, looking for a hoard of gold that's hidden. And you've got them going on an adventure, and they're up against... I think there's one one main one main villain and I think it's Richard Lee Sung credited as Chinese man of the general I think he's the main bad guy they're after or up against but you've also got John Rice Davies Sonny Landham who uh, who's the big who's the big who's the big Indian guy I can't remember his his character name but he was the big Indian guy in Predator um, the big, big, booming, deep voice. Like when he does that big laugh, laugh in the jungle, he goes, ah, 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 and the predator ends up mocking that, or mimicking it. And you've got Ian Abercrombie, uh, Brit famous British actor, who also was primarily the voice of Emperor Palpatine in the animated Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, I believe. Uh... Yeah, so it's it's just it, not quite like an Indiana Jones, but it, a, a good um, adventure film with like um, gold and caves and traps and temples and yeah. So that is Firewalker. Saw that one years ago.
Another one I saw years ago is from 1985. This is called Explorers. And this one is, is about a bunch of kids, one kid in particular who keeps having dreams of these blueprints. And these kids get together, a bunch of really brilliant kids, and decide they want to build their own spaceship to go into space. And it's a bunch of young actors, and you've got Ethan Hawke, River Phoenix, as two of the main, main kids. Um, You've also got James Cromwell in there, Robert Picardo, Dick Miller, because the movie is directed by Joe Dante, and Dick Miller was in most most John, Joe Dante films. Mary Kay Place, and yeah, it's essentially it's the kids, it's the kids working their hardest to build their own spaceship uh, to actually go into space. And I'm trying to remember the motivation. No, I think it's just the repeat, he's got repeated, like repeated uh, recurring dreams. So they just take it upon themselves to give it a shot. And you'd have to watch the movie to see if they actually succeed. That was Explorers. Another one. Uh, next one, number five from 1981. I remember seeing this uh, when we used to go to my, my grandma's house grandma's apartment after church. Well, she was the only one I knew who had first choice and super channel uh, back before they were called movie network. And we were there one day and I remember seeing this. I may have seen it more than once from our frequent visits, but weekly visits, but I remember seeing it, watching it there. And this was called dragon slayer. And it was really good at the time. It's still it's still a good movie, but I mean it was really good when you're six, five, six or seven years old. Probably wasn't supposed to watch it at that time. But this one has wizards and dragons, and at the time, and still uh, pretty good for today. The 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 effects that brought the the dragons to life, or the effects they used to display magic in the movie, were pretty impressive. And let's see, it mainly stars as the, the young wizard, um, a guy who is well known for, I guess, Ally McBeal. It's Peter McNichol. And you've also got Ian McDermott, uh, <laughs> Deborah Palpatine himself. Um, I guess uh, maybe it's, it's a lot of British actors. You probably recognize their face, but the names don't really stand out to me. And it's, yeah, it's essentially a young wizard apprentice uh, who is sent on a quest to kill a dragon that's been uh, rampaging and terrorizing a local village. And uh, his, his mentor, a wizard, dies, and he takes it upon himself to carry out this task. And yeah, it's a it's a it's a fun movie from the early early '80s, and I thought it was very well done, even for back then. Dragon Slayer, not to be confused with the the animated video game and cartoon Dragon's Lair. This is Dragon Slayer. Okay, number four, we have a film from 2006 by Tarsem Singh called The Fall. This is one that was supposed to come out and it got delayed for several years and then Spike Jones and David Fincher uh, lent their help to get it, uh, I guess, produced or completed and released to the world. And this one is uh, stars Lee Pace. He's both, you know, Lee Pace and Justine Waddell are the two main actors that you'd recognize in this and the rest are uh, various actors from around the world. And then this is a very international cast and a very international look because it was filmed in, oof, where do they say it? Is the thing, uh, oh, they say, uh, shot in more than 20 countries, including India, Indonesia, uh, Italy, France, Spain, Namibia, China, and several others, and the movie is gorgeous because you've got this uh, well-known stunt stunt man, stunt actor, 
played by Lee Pace, who's, who's uh, he suffers an injury on one of the movie sets, and he's recuperating in a hospital. And there's a young girl played by, what's her name? Oh, 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 bear with me. Katinka Untaru, she plays Alexandria, and Lee Pace plays Roy Walker. And Justine Waddell is one of the nurses there. But he's recovering and he needs, he's sort of addicted to morphine. And he strikes up a friendship with the little girl. And he keeps having her go um, steal medication for him. And in exchange for doing these favors for him, he tells her this story. And the story that he's telling her, he just makes up all these things fantastical stories and he incorporates people in the real world into the stories like he plays a bandit and you get the little girl is in the stories and the nurse is in the stories and the other other people around the hospital so the adventure part is basically in the stories he tells her and how they visualize on the screen and one of the more impressive things I learned about this film was that they really didn't use any CGI all the effects you see are practical real in-camera effects in the movies gorgeous gorgeous the cinematography the sets the makeup the design everything oh it's gorgeous okay so that is the fall another one and the last one of the oldies it's from 1984 <laughs> one of my personal favorites from when i was a kid and it's called cloak and dagger not to be confused with the the marvel tv series and this one stars Henry Thomas, because uh, I think this was around the time, he'd be around the same age as when he made E.T. And Henry Thomas, Dabney Coleman, um, William Forsyth, uh, yeah, that's about most of the names you'd recognize. But you basically got this kid, Davey, and he has a, Another friend, his little friend Kim, and he's a big fan of this role-playing game. And the main character in the role-playing game is this guy, special agent called Jack Flack. Now his father is played by Dabney Coleman, and he works for the military. But he's not home a lot, so the kid kind of pictures Jack Flack as a cooler, uh, cooler version of his father. So he's especially he works in the military, so Jack Flack is his father, but is this cool secret agent. And they end up getting involved in an actual interna international um, or like a super spy situation. Because a spy that is dying has hidden this uh, top secret program inside a game cartridge that he plays called Cloak and Dagger. And he takes it to one of his friends, played by William Forsyth, who, Morris, who works at this game company, and he, he ends up solving, solving the, I guess, the mystery in the game that unlocks the top secret file, and he gets killed. So these little kids who live in this fantasy world um, are actually involved in a real, real uh, espionage situation and they have to go on the run and it's a cool it's just a cool movie even for the low-tech era of the 80s and yeah it's worth it's it, it holds up to this day like you see William Forsyth and everything else he's done you watch this and he's like got that dark dark brown shaggy hair and the glasses he's almost unrecognizable you wouldn't know what he what, who he was back then but you see him now it's like oh my god that's Forsyth. So that's Cloak and Dagger. And okay, so we go on to number two. Another one that this one I had heard about when uh, James and Dave, formerly of the Rodcast, had talked about it on one of their shows. And it's called Troll Hunter. And this one is a Norwegian film. And it was the first film by Andre Overdahl, who went on to do the Autopsy of Jane Doe, uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, and I think there was another one in there, but it's escaping me at the moment. Anyway, this one is basically, you've got these 
group of students from the local university college um, are going to, in, and they have a cameraman and stuff, they're going to investigate these bear killings in Norway, in this area of Norway. And they meet up with a guy who's a suspected bear poacher named Hans. And I don't think there's any of the recognizable actors that I remember in this one. No, I don't think so. And it turns out that he's not actually uh, hunting bears. He's hunting trolls. And the effects for these trolls that are some fairly large and some massive are pretty amazing, the way they put these on screen. Um, and it's basically them uh, hooking up with this guy to go hunt down these trolls who are um, terrorizing the countryside. And you find out for whatever reason they like uh, the blood of Christians best. I don't know where they came up with, with that part of their mythology, but it's a unique mythology for a movie featuring trolls. So, um, and it has a, it's, a, it's sort of a found footage look to it because they're always have the camera on and stuff. And it's, it's, oh man, it's a super impressive looking movie. Troll Hunter. All right, now number one, the reason I made this list, and I have to, uh, I have to give sole credit to James from the Cinema Realists. Hi, uh, James. Um, because I never would have heard of this movie if he, if he hadn't talked about it on the show, and I don't know where I would have discovered it, because I bought this off of Google Play. I found it online, I watched it online, but I also uh, picked it up off of Google Play. And I've never seen the DVD or Blu-ray anywhere, never heard anybody talk about it, except for him. And this is called, this is from 2017, it's called Dave Made a Maze. <laughs> and I remember I commented after I watched this that it is incredibly strange and so much fun. Because you basically got, um, you got Dave, and there's his girlfriend. His girlfriend comes home, and she is played by Mira Rohit Kumbani, and Dave is played by Nick Thune. You've also got James Urbaniak in there, Adam Bush, who was Warren in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, who was one of the, one of the guys going after Buffy, the trio, I guess. Rick Overton's in there. Um, there's several actors you'd recognize. You may just not know the names. Like, I can't pick them out. But uh, Annie comes home, and <laughs> she finds her, her the main room in their apartment is taken up by this large cardboard fort. And <laughs> she comes home, and she hears uh, Nick, Nick saying, Hey, honey. And he has built himself a maze, or he calls a labyrinth. But he doesn't want her to come in. And she goes and tries to mess with him. He's like, no, 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 And you hear this loud crashing, shaking noises. Because apparently he, he made a maze, and it's not finished, and it's much bigger on the inside. He doesn't want her to come in. Well, he ends up getting her to call one of, one of his friends. And then Gordon, and that's Adam Bush, comes over, and he's analyzing the thing and interacting with Nick, because they can hear Nick, but Nick can't find his way out, because it's a lot bigger on the inside than on the outside. It takes up the room, but when you actually get inside the maze, it's massive. But it's all made of cardboard, and there's all these traps and monsters and stuff. And she keeps inviting people over, and there ends up being, there's Gordon, I think their friend Lawrence, um... Uh, James Urbaniak's character who's making a documentary so he has his film crew there there's a couple that are friends of theirs and for some reason fl two Flemish tourists are there a homeless man and everyone but the homeless man actually goes into the maze and they're trying to find Nick they find Nick and then they have to find their way out of the maze oh my god this movie is incredible it is incredible it is so much fun and it is so creative what they did with this movie. Incredible. Uh, I don't know how much more I want to say about this, except that this may, the labyrinth does have a minotaur. That's all I'll say. So I have to thank Dave for, re for talking about this movie, recommending it, because it's just, it's just incredible. So thank you, Dave. James, sorry. Thank you, James. So I get mixed up with the movie here. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. 
All right, so I guess I'll quit while I'm ahead here. So I hope you like this one, and I'll uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Toodles.